I begin by talking again to the guy Democrats seem to hate just a little bit more than Donald Trump, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. And they hate him because he would not sit down. He would not get in line and keep his mouth shut as he was told to do. No, Kennedy challenged Joe Biden on a variety of issues. But instead of taking him head on and taking him seriously, the Democrats chose to rig the primaries and force him out. But instead of throwing in the towel, he threw his hat in the ring as an independent candidate for president. He's making a big enough mark on the polls that the Biden campaign is, frankly, scared to death of Robert F. Kennedy Jr. So that interview coming up in just a few minutes, you'll want to stick around for that. But let's begin today with the bogus trial of Donald Trump in New York with the Frankenstein case that some call it. Not one lawyer I know from either side of the aisle can say what the actual crime here is. Where is it? It really is remarkable. I hear from plenty of lawyers, and really most of them are left of center, if you can imagine. None of them, not one that I've spoken to, think Donald Trump broke any actual law. Because this is all something pulled out of thin air by Alvin Bragg. Remember that last sentence? That doesn't make sense legally or factually. Listen to this. What people really ought to be troubled by about this is Bragg isn't just trying to enforce federal campaign finance law. He's making up his own federal campaign finance law because the two federal authorities that actually do have jurisdiction to investigate these, the Justice Department and the Federal Election Commission, both looked at this and decided not to proceed against Trump because these are not campaign expenditures, number one. And number two, even if you assume for argument's sake that they were, the next reporting period after the Stormy Daniels payment, the non-disclosure agreement, wouldn't have been until after the 2016 election. It would have been in 2017. Bragg's theory here is that Trump violated his version of the campaign finance laws in order to steal the 2016 election. That doesn't make sense legally or factually. Yeah. Remember that last sentence again. That doesn't make sense legally or factually because you'll be hearing that a lot when it comes to the trial. And honestly... We can use that sentence for all of the lawfare the Democrats are trying against Trump all over the country. People that are sitting and watching this are like, hey, Democrats, what are you actually doing here? People that have historically had nothing good to say about Trump say it's pretty damn obvious. The Democrats don't think they can beat him in a fair election, so they're trying to disqualify him in court any way they can, and they're willing to do anything to make that happen. People who wouldn't normally be weighing in on this are starting to feel the need to, like ESPN's Stephen A. Smith. To my liberal friends out there, all you're doing is showing that you're scared you can't beat them on the issues and the merits. That's why he keeps saying it's a political campaign against me. That's why he keeps saying they can't beat me at the election. At polls, this is the only way they could do it. And if you don't put him in jail and he still goes from being a presumptive GOP nominee to the official GOP nominee and he goes to the polls, even though he was going to whine about winning and being being rigged again, you have given more fodder to that argument. Which means we'll never have peace in this country because tens of millions of people see what extent the other side is willing to go through just to keep him out of office because they can't beat him on their own merits. Can't beat him on your own merits. Now, inside the courtroom on Tuesday, they were able to seat some jurors, but the political persuasion of the jury really is a 14th Amendment issue. You'll hear that in appeal. I mean, we all know Donald Trump getting a fair trial in New York when the jury pool only comes from Manhattan is, well, almost impossible. Listen. Pretty extraordinary for in the very first jury pool, before you interview anybody, half of the jury pool already says they're so biased against President Trump that they can't serve on the jury. Hmm. This is what we call voir dire, where the lawyers and the judges ask questions of the potential jurors to ferret out any bias. Before we even get to do that, half the jury poll already says they're fully biased. That's only going to feed into, I think, Donald Trump's claim that the public integrity of the courts and the prosecutors is to be questioned as being biased and unfair against them. So based on that and the fact that what Alvin Bragg is charging President Trump for isn't really legal anyway, 
We know he won't get a fair trial. It's a bogus pile of charges and a rigged jury. 